tuned I'm back stay tuned if you want to learn about pages 193 to 215 of the amazing book the science of black care by Audrey Davis Sabasovi this particular chapter you guys it is wow I just learned so much it is all about perms if you want to learn about perms text laxity how to take care of your perm how to apply your perm the rules of a perm you know how to prevent breakage what your hair needs you need to stay tuned for this chapter all right Let's get started. guys so let's just uh you know i know it's going to be controversial i'm just going to start out the gate okay let's just go on start out the gate okay if you are the type of person that thinks the perm is the most evilest thing in the world and everybody that has perm is like evil and want to be white or whatever hates themselves loathes themselves don't like their natural hair whatever this is your cue stop watching the video go on stop click go to the next video because it's not really about that I'm just trying to be as, as positive and as encouraging to people with all different types of hair types, textures, whatever they choose to do with their hair. As you can see, I'm natural. Um, but this is uh, the book that I'm reviewing, and there is a whole chapter in this book, you guys, dedicated to the chemical processing stages of your hair. And if you want to have healthy, I'm going to put quotation marks, but I know some of y'all going to say it ain't healthy. But if you want your hair to be long and not broken off, and you don't want chemical burns and you still want your hair to be long even though you have a perm and you know feel whatever you feel your definition of healthy is these are the tips that are in the book so I'm gonna go over them the point is I don't want this to be a negative place because there may be girls that are not ready to transition who aren't ready to go natural or girls who just don't want to go natural that have perms but they still want the information and they shouldn't have to be berated because they want to get the information you feel me okay anyway enough of that let's dive on in because this is ooh, 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 juicy <laughs> So she says, relaxes range on a pH scale from 9 to 14. Mild is like a 9 and 14 is like a super. She says, as the relaxer moves up the pH scale, fiber swelling and cuticle leaf lifting increase. The more the shaft swells, the more damage occurs to the hair. She said, repeat applications of relaxers should only be made from just above the scalp to the line of demarcation, which is the line that separates the new growth from previously processed hair. So let me go ahead and read page 193. Although chemical relaxers are often referred to as perms in common conversation, this terminology is incorrect. Perm is short for permanent, wave, a chemical process with the exact opposite effect in chemistry of a relaxer. Permanents make straight hair curly. Relaxers start with curly hair and make it straight. Regardless of intent, both chemical processes cleave disulfide bonds to achieve a new permanent hair configuration. So I thought that was really interesting. <laughs> Get your terminology right. It's relaxer, not perm. Hmm, excuse me. <laughs> but I like learning it. Then she goes into types of relaxers. The major difference between lye and no lye relaxers um, formula is simply the chemical compound responsible for breaking the hair bonds. In lye relaxer, this bond breaking compound is usually sodium hydroxide. In no lye relaxers, relaxers, the active compound is generally guanidine hydroxide. The general public often incorrectly assumes that no lie that it sorry, incorrectly assumes that a no lie designation means that a relaxer is not as dangerous or is safer to use than a lye relaxer. However, this is simply not the case. The active elements, guanidine, lithium, and potassium hydroxide found in no lye relaxers are in the same chemical family as sodium hydroxide and no lye products are just as dangerous as lye products if mishandled. Okay, so she said that lye relaxers are the preferred formula of salon industry. These sodium hydroxide based relaxers are stronger than no lye relaxers. They are usually formatted at a higher pH, 13 to 14. It's easier on the hair but harder on the scalp because they don't leave drying mineral deposits on the hair fibers. However, the high pH can cause scalp irritation and burning if not handled properly. We have all... I, I just just talking about it you guys is making me have a flashback to my scalp being on fire so anyway 
if I if I if I go back, just just bear with me. <laughs> I'm having flashbacks. Um, anyway, she said also that lie relaxers can be can breach the protective layer of the petroleum base more quickly. Therefore, they must be applied quickly and carefully. She goes over no lie relaxers. No lies are often considered to be extremely drying to the hair. They are considered to be harder on the hair and easier on the scalp. Now, I'm going to read what she put on page 196. No lie relaxers are often considered to be extremely drying on to, to texture tresses. The common saying that no lie relaxers are, quote, harder on the hair and easier on the scalp speaks directly to this common observation. In guanidine hydroxide relaxers, the chemical reaction between guanidine carbonate and calcium hydroxide leaves stubborn, doling calcium deposits on the exterior of the hair shaft. Calcium deposits decrease the hair fiber's ability to absorb new moisture, the same problem that we see in hard water mineral cases. No lie relaxing can be continued successfully if proper calcium chelating takes place to lift the deposits as needed. Cleansing the hair with a chelating shampoo after the relaxer can help remedy calcium buildup and dryness within the hair fiber. No lie relaxers are considered gentler on the scalp because they tend to be less irritating than lie relaxers. This is why most sensitive scalp relaxer products are no lie formulas. Then she goes into this other brand of relaxers. The thioglycolic relaxers use ammonium thioglycolic which, to straighten the hair. The pH balance ranges from 6 to 9, so it has a lower pH balance, but they are not compatible with any form of hydroxide and cannot be applied to the hair that has been previously relaxed by a lye or no lye relaxer. You cannot cross mix that. You know, I never understood back in the day when people were like, oh, she on a Mazzani or she on a this or that, and you can't mix the perm, but this particular perm, if you have a lye or a no lye and you switch to this perm, you will be jacked. You can kiss your hair goodbye, not gonna happen, they don't mix, so not good for the hair. It says this particular relaxer rarely produces impressive straightening results and are extremely hard on black hair. Which relaxer type is best? She said, regardless of its type, a relaxer is only as good as the person applying it and the person maintaining it afterwards. In the wrong hands, all relaxer formulas can lead to extensive, irreversible damage to texture tresses, including hair breakage and complete baldness. Unfortunately, there are just as many damaged and breaking heads of hair relaxed with lie relaxers as with no lie relaxers. Relaxers, by their very nature, damage the hair and scalp if they come in contact with them. Chemical burns, irritation, and hair loss can result from any kind of chemical relaxer. Application and maintenance, not relaxer brand or type, are the true determining factors governing the health or demise of chemically relaxed hair. Then, most importantly, for all y'all that want to know, how relaxers straighten textured hair. This is exactly what happens from a scientific perspective. Contrary to popular belief, the chemicals don't straighten the hair, but it's the mechanical smoothing process which is responsible for rearranging the relaxed, broken bonds into the desired straight form. She said, never comb relaxer through the hair. This stretches your hair while it's in its most vulnerable shape and causes irreparable damage. And so now you guys know, if you ever go to your hairstylist and she, mm, pull it, mm, let me get it straight, girl, mm, all that, no. You know, scientifically, she's jacking your hair up. You need to switch hairstylists, run out of there, rinse your hair out, get out the door, go somewhere else because irreparable damage, okay? This particular section, you guys, she goes over preparing textured hair for a relaxer. This is another thing why you guys need to get the book because this is part I'm not going to go over. When you get the book on page 200 to 204, these were all the people that permed their hair their self, themselves. She gives specific step-by-step -step instructions on the do's and don'ts of how to apply your own relaxer, what you should, what you should not do. 
the timer, all of that. Like she's very specific of how to handle it for yourself if you're going to handle the chemical yourself and how to do it. That in itself is worth the doggone book if you have a perm to me because she really breaks it all the way down. Post relaxer care. These are the things you need to do after you have a relaxer to take care of your hair. Protein supplementation is a critical part of the post relaxer process and, re and replacing lost protein in chemically treated hair is a top concern. Ain't that a shame? We've all done it. Mm, mm, mm. Many of us have been raised to believe that the relaxer is working when it begins to tingle. This is a costly mistake and a sign of incorrect, unskilled relaxer application. Chemical burns are not the cost of acquiring straightened hair. They should never happen, period. Wow. Relaxer tingling means that the relaxer has breached and broken down the protective base barrier that was placed on the scalp and is now in contact with the scalp skin layers. Wow. Whatever the cause of chemical irritation, strand testing, proper relaxer strength selection, and adequate basing scalp can help prevent unnecessary burning and scabbing from relaxers. So then she said, what's the difference between text laxing and relaxer, you guys? She said, text laxing. Note that the word text lax is not a term used or recognized in cosmetology. Rather, it is a play on words used to describe a process that mimics two very real chemical services, texturizing and chemical relaxing. In short, text laxing describes a chemical relaxing process in which bond breakage is minimized and hair straightening is controlled to 80% or less. So that's what text laxing is. Basically, you're straightening your hair with a perm, but you're only getting it to where it's 80% or less straight, not all the way fully straight. Then she says, texturizing soft curl, remember that? <laughs> she said a texturizer is a chemical process that is formulated to loosen the natural curls and kinks of textured hair types. Texturizer formulas typically use thioglycolate chemicals and are generally used by individuals who wish to wear their hair curly a majority of the time, but prefer a looser defined curly look. Relaxing is a relaxer completely straightens the kinks and curls in textured hair. It is typically worn by those who wish to wear hair, to wear straighter hairstyles on a, rec on a regular basis. So. Those are the difference between text laxing, a texturizer soft curl, and a relaxer. Then she went to expand on text laxing, and she said, depending on the degree of underprocessing, okay, text laxed hair can allow much of the original texture and curl to remain in the hair while still allowing it to straighten easily in the presence of heat. Although this textured look is achieved with a straightening relaxer, the underprocessed hair often looks similar to texturized hair, hence the term text lax. Then she goes over relaxer stretching. That's how long you go before you get your next relaxer. Those are all the tips. So many aha moments. I just had to share you guys because as you guys know, when I had a perm, like, oh my God, so long ago, I I had some really bad experiences. You'll, you'll see my little why I would natural. Please click the link somewhere and it'll explain to you how people put a perm on my hair, put me under the dryer, just all kind of hor horror stories. And I was younger and I just didn't know. So I wanted to make sure I did this chapter, even though I'm not a perm girl, because for the girls out there that are getting perms, I don't want them to... Um, become subject to any type of chemical burns or get bald into the scalp or permanent alopecia, the hair doesn't come back or anything. Like there's no, if you just know the information, if that's what you choose for your hair and for your life or whatever, at least you're armed with the information. So like once again, I'm a supportive community. You know how I get down. I just wanted to be able to give you guys the real deal holy field on it. Once again, like I said, if you hate perms, I get it. I get it. I'm not disrespecting your position. I feel you. You don't like them. That's fine. Feel free not to leave a comment because I'm just doing it for people who have perms that want to know at least the best rules so they don't get a chemical burn or have other issues if they want to continue with that journey, you know? Everybody's got to make their own choice. Alrighty. Please thumbs up if you found this information to be helpful. Dun, 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 dun. Um, also, please subscribe, you guys. Lots of free great videos coming your way. Please join my Hot Caster Hair Growth Challenge. Oh my gosh, like I said, my hair is just thriving. That's love. Mwah, mwah.